Hi, everybody, and welcome to this week's podcast entitled Adding to Your Toolbox. Very excited about it. But I think I'm most excited this week because this is a full-fledged podcast with everybody on the board of Mindful Me. So some quick introductions. I am Dan. Hi, guys. I'm Jonathan. Hello, everyone. I'm Fernando. Hi, everyone. I'm Alexa. And I'm Thomas. Hi, everyone. I'm Sierra. And I am Jake Lynch. So before we get into the whole podcast and telling you guys about the experience and journey we went through with adding to our toolbox, I just want to check in with everyone and know how their week has been and how everyone's meditations have been going. Well, I guess I'll start. Um, it's been really cool. So we have done a lot of, and for those that follow our podcast, Thomas is my son, and so we live in the same house. But we have just done some really cool spiritual stuff, some really interesting meditations. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we are both reading uh, in two incredibly good spiritual books, Thomas, and the stuff you've done. Mm -hmm. um, so I still have been continuing to do my uh, daily meditations every single day. And one kind of observation that I've had, especially when it comes to, because I've been really good in terms of like exercising as much as I can to sort of improve my physical health. Um, but lately I've had less motivation than usual. So I just tried to kind of like meditate on why. And I think just kind of with everything that's happening so far this year, I think I've just been so overwhelmed. And I, I think the realization of that has sort of helped me try to get through it. Um, so that's brought a little bit more motivation back in order to get to med meditating every day, exercising, and remembering to do the things of the um, routine that I've developed over this quarantine. It's true. Our routine has kind of like taken a bit of a dip. We're still doing it, but I think you're right. There's just so much happening that it's been a, it's been a drag. Yeah. So, but good stuff because we're uh, figuring out moving forward. Exactly. Jake, how about you go? <laughs> um, yeah, so as, as it comes by, uh, comes by truthfully, my time has been going pretty well, actually. Uh, I just recently got my diploma for high school, and just with the rest of my colleagues here, Fernando and Alexa being the other two, uh, it feels good to have gotten a big part of my life out of the way, so I'm excited to be able to keep going with mindful me and keep uploading my meditations in terms of my routine i uh i try not to stick to too solid of a routine and give myself some space for improvement where i see fit slash uh unforeseen things that happen throughout my day so uh in terms of that I, i've been feeling pretty good there's not much for me to work on right now in terms of actual um you know with the absence of schoolwork, but I do get to keep busy with thinking about meditations and thinking about uh, Fernando and I's podcast. So. So I want to piggyback off something that Thomas said about feeling overwhelmed, um, especially with everything that's happening in our world today. I have actually felt the same way. I, I feel like it's really hard to focus at times because I'm balancing my job, my social life, my family life. And I think I did something similar where I kind of stepped back for a minute because I recognized that I was putting a lot of pressure on myself to, to be the perfect everything and to be on top of everything. And I, I did some meditation and kind of took a step back to reflect on how I was feeling and what my thoughts were. Um, and what I ended up doing is deciding that I was not going to put my, put this pressure on myself. Um, so I, I used the tools of meditation to kind of give me that space to explore. Um, because I have been putting a lot of pressure on myself during this pandemic and everything that's happening in our world with, with, um, Black Lives Matter. And I decided that I needed to let go of that pressure that I was giving to myself. So like everyone's been saying, there's so much going on right now, but at the same time, I feel like with the absence of school, I'm kind of not having much to do, but stress about everything that's going on. 
And I've actually found that mindfulness specifically, whether it's coming up with podcast ideas or using our own meditations, I feel like that has kept me busy in a positive way. So instead of adding to my stress, what's keeping me busy is actually relieving my stress, which I think is what everyone needs, especially right now with the virus and everything that's going on in this world. So I think I've really benefited from that. Yeah, just to chip in for a second, I think uh, it's like a consistent theme between everyone that we're always overwhelmed with everything. Because even when you look at the news, it's like every second there's something breaking news, like when breaking news used to be once every week. So this is something that like, I think we're all getting accustomed to and that we all kind of built like we're expecting pressure now. So whenever there's not pressure in our life, we kind of feel like a void which is why mindfulness, especially for me, has impacted me so much and why I've been trying to settle on more of a strict routine and try to meditate at least once a day and try to breathe throughout the day. I try to focus on more. And that's really uh, helped me improve through pressures and constant pressures that we feel. And yeah, so that's how I've been uh, dealing with it throughout the weeks. Yeah, so to conclude how our weeks have been, um, honestly, the same as everyone else, it's been a very stressful past few weeks in regards to all the stuff going around in society and all that. However, we're always looking for a room of improvement and getting more um, more sources so that we can help everyone that watches our podcast and our meditations out. So Dan had, every time we see a class or any type of workshop or anything that it has anything to do with mindfulness or mindful me that should help us, we always share it with each other. And Dan found a master class for Ayurveda. I'm not sure if I pronounced that fully right, but it, we thought it would be a good idea for all of us as a group, as a team, to go through the master class and then come up with a podcast like this one to share how we enjoyed it and how we interpret it differently and how we are going to use it in the future or even right now to help everyone else out. So, we all did participate in that class. I'm glad no one mentioned it yet, so we can talk about it more in detail and more in depth now. But that was this last week, and we were all in it, and we obviously had something to talk about for a couple of days afterwards because it was truly a really nice class. So I'm going to let Dan talk a little bit about how that class was or actually Alexa, how, how the class was itself. So like Fernando said, this class, we were all able to attend. And in times like this, that's something that's really hard to find because obviously con spaces are confined to less than 50% capacity or whatever it is. So doing this Ayurveda class online was really helpful. And it was actually really cool to still be able to interact with everyone, whether it be in the chat box or with the uh, leader of the meeting, just saying stuff out loud and kind of making it still interactive while online. So that's actually something that Mindful Me is looking forward to doing. And this class has helped us see that this is possible. And it's actually really good to be a part of, uh, given that it's still interactive. It's still, there's still a lot to learn, whether online or in person. Um, one of the things to kind of piggyback a little bit on, Alexa, on what Alexa was saying. I have been taking, I think, since this started, this was my third like class um, I've been in a full-fledged 10 week workshop and then I'm in a five week workshop right now uh, and then this was just a one-time class but it's all been online uh, through different platforms and it was really neat to be able to experience not just the energy of like a physical classroom like if you're in a physical class you, there might be 12 maybe 20 25 people in the room but for something like what we just did, it was thousands of people that were in the room. And it was really neat to be able to kind of feel that energy and how everybody really just did involve themselves and how, for me, it actually deepened the meaning of what we are learning for, for Ayurveda. People from all over the world, too. It really was. Yeah. And I was actually having that conversation with Dan about this earlier today. And, um, Something I realized when uh, the master class was happening was how much I actually knew. Um, because a lot of the stuff um, that she was talking about sounded really familiar, just in a different kind of way. Um, because between the meditating that I've been doing, and I've also taken you know, classes with Lisa and everything, um, between the headspace meditations and stuff, um, a lot of the stuff that she was talking about seemed really familiar to me. It just seemed like it was like different ways of teaching certain um, 
um, certain topics and certain methods and stuff. So that was like an observation that I had. How did you, the, how'd you feel? Because we, we talked about this earlier and I thought this was really kind of neat of what you had said. How did, what do you think it was from like the class? Cause there was a lot of things you and I were both looking at, right? And we were both like, Oh, we're familiar with this or we're familiar with this. What was it about that that you felt was the best part of that? Honestly, it kind of goes back to what you said, how you could kind of feel the energy of everybody who's participating. And it seemed like everyone sort of like bought into what she was doing, whether, because you would imagine since there's people from all over the world tuning in, that there are people who are really advanced with this stuff and know a lot. And, and there's also people who are new to this and are trying to like understand it. So it was interesting to feel the dynamic of everybody tuning in. And you could, you could truly feel the energy of everybody who's like truly excited to be there. I mean, it was free, so you don't have, didn't have to be there, but these people chose to be there. And it was really cool to be a part of something like that. It was also kind of neat to see how she was able to take so many of these great spiritual ideas and fuse them into one, which I thought was neat. So I kind of wanted to add to what Thomas was saying about how, how both Thomas and Dan have taken multiple um, classes like this and working in the mental health field, we're constantly um, learning new things and new materials, even though it's already, somebody already wrote the book, right? There, it, it, it feels like if you took one meditation class, is that everything? Do, do I know everything now? And, and my answer to that is no. I, I feel like I could possibly take multiple classes just about meditation and learn something new. And that's something that I've actually noticed what Thomas was saying before about how some things did feel familiar that you've already kind of learned it or experienced it. But I think what I wanted to touch on is that each teacher, each person that's running the class has a different style of how they're presenting it to you. And so even though it's the same topic, you might get something different out of it. And I know for, for my personal experience, um, being a, um, a mental health counselor, we have to take a certain amount of credit hours to keep our license. So I've taken a million classes on meditation or grounding or mindfulness. But what I have found is I actually learn something new in each class. Sometimes I'll be sitting there. I'm like, okay, I know this. I, I already understand this material. Um, but having the, the being open-minded to learning more, even though you think you already have that understanding of the concept, I think is really important because just because I already learned this doesn't mean I don't have anything more to learn. Yeah, I, for, for me, one of the biggest things that I come across when it comes to these classes or these lessons that we go through, uh, specifically with like Lisa Goodwin is, uh, an immense amount of perspective, just coming across multiple reasons why I can look at what I'm doing in my life or what's happening to me in my life and make it positive. And for me, that's, that's one of the, the largest things to come across to be able to add to uh, my toolbox in a sense, add this flashlight where I'm able to see myself even in the darkest of situations and bring a light to it. And I think that's what the majority of these classes are trying to give you and not only does it give you it give all of us personally uh, ways of making our lives better enriching our lives but uh, also as a company uh, sitting through that master class it gave us so many ideas of how we can convey messages that we have convey our own style and uh, push it and give opportunities to people that are willing to listen uh, to find a way to, to convey our message better and to a bigger group. Yeah. So, as a team, I think, I think we've all gone through multiple different classes, whether it be like sound healing or Lisa Goodwin or aromatherapy. And I, I think in all of these classes, there's all been a, there's been a specific theme throughout all of them, no matter how different each class is, there's always a reoccurring theme. And like Sierra said, although some things may feel familiar, there's always something new that you can add to your toolbox. And whether it be like how to relax from the smell of something to listening to something and letting your mind roam, there's all one connection as to staying positive and letting your mind be free. And that's what this masterclass has also taught us through the, this Ayurveda thing. We've all realized that 
there's always a common theme no matter who the teacher is and there's always something to be learned from every single class yeah just to chip in for a second um the main reason that like i take classes <laughs> per se is to learn because that's what taking classes is all about but i recently discovered through this whenever i take a class i always talk to either my mom my dad my friends and people around me and i like to take what i learn and kind of redistribute the teaching so other people could kind of learn the same things and i found myself after this class one fact that kind of stuck out to me that i heard before but you whenever you hear a bunch of things you just kind of forget is about all the decisions one person makes in a day they said that 35,000 decisions are made by you in a single day so then after that i was thinking about wow how many decisions do i make in a week and then etc in a month and then when I told my parents this and I told other people, then I kind of realized myself taking more thought into all the decisions I was making, which is kind of the whole point of taking a class for me is how does it impact myself and the ones I surround myself with and how that can it benefit us. And I found that benefiting me as I continue to take more deeper thoughts into the decisions I was making. Also, another thing um, that I kind of took away from the class as well. I didn't know what a dosha was. So I feel like it kind of, I kind of saw as like figuring out like what your dosha was kind of like one of those like Buzzfeed quizzes, like on the, <laughs> the quiz that you take um, before that we entered into the class. I believe I was a Pitta Kapha. Um, and when she was kind of breaking down what each dosha had, I could truly see like the combination that was the Pitta Kapha. And I was like, wow, that really does sound like, like me. So I think learning about the three doshas was really interesting and it's really applicable to everybody. So that was the one thing that I found really interesting about the classes. And so there's a lot of information about them. I can't exactly, you know, spew out everything um, about each dosha, but definitely if you look them up, um, there's some really interesting stuff. And I'm sure there's quizzes and stuff that people can take online to, um, to see which dosha that uh, you have or which dosha you are rather. So that was one thing that I thought was pretty interesting in the class as well. I think one of the things that Sierra said, um, which I found profound, is, you know, you take different courses and you're always, it's kind of like when you're in school, right? You take an English class, a social studies class, math, science, and, and your electives, and you're learning something different in each class. And by the time you graduate, you've learned all these new things and your brain thinks completely different and you are at a different point in your life, mm -hmm. right? So I think when it comes to something that I've learned, because when we looked at this, this last class, it kind of helps me to reflect on the, you know, I've had a lot of years, obviously, I'm the oldest one in our group, you know, of different courses and workshops and things. And, and I, I think the thing that I've been looking at the most is how we relate to the world, which I know sounds a little deep, but how does our past really affect who we are in the actual present? Can we quiet our past so that who we are in the present is our highest and, and most perfect self? Mm -hmm. So I've been reading a lot of Eckhart Tolle lately, and he's a great read, just very, very deep. Dense. Very dense, be ready. But it's kind of like one of the things that I've been looking at and how all these other pieces fit into that and kind of help you reach another level. So I think when we're always adding to our toolbox, it's just adding different things like different classes when you're in high school or college, um, you know, or, or graduate school or, or whatnot, and the ultimate goal is that enlightenment. That ultimate goal is that final diploma. So, uh, but I think that's one of the things that I was looking at and definitely in this class and the other things have helped me to kind of deepen that. So I'm not gonna just talk about this last class that we've taken because I don't know if you guys have seen my previous podcast, but less, a little over four years ago, I did not practice any type of mindfulness. And if you asked me four, three years ago what mindfulness was, I would tell you, probably meditation and yoga and that's it so after obviously these three or four years I've taken many classes in the sense of aromatherapy or sound healing or just motivational speakers that just speak to you and tell you how you can change your life with simply changing even just one word and those types of things show you how mindfulness itself has no limit to it 
So taking classes just always like I'm always surprised by a class, no matter how much I've already known from the previous classes, something you always get out of any class you take. So it's crazy how we say fill our toolbox, yet this toolbox has like a hole in it because you literally will never fill it because it's so broad and there's so much to go along with mindfulness that every course you take will add to your toolbox. If it's now 10 years from now, 20 years from now, you're never going to know all of it. So it's really great to take these courses. And it was a great idea to take this all together so we could see how we interpret it differently. And even going along with us, like the way Dan and Tom, Thomas interprets it gives us even more resources because if we didn't interpret it that way, we would only know one aspect of what we learned. Doing it with all five, six of us gives us more opportunity to learn even more through just one simple class because we all have different mindsets. We all see it differently. So we all get to learn even more with just one class. So given that we all just discussed what we learned through classes, it's good to see how we grow and connect better through learning. So like I just mentioned earlier, we did a sound healing class together. I think it was last year and uh, aromatherapy and something with nutrition. So we connect and grow in the sense of everything we do daily, literally all the time has to do with mindfulness, the way you eat, how you listen to things, how you change your mindset, all has to do with mindfulness. So we grow every day that we go through a class in the sense that before I did the sound healing, I would never think that sound should relax you or that sound should put you to bed or that sound should like do separate things that actually work. I would never have thought of that. And like the nutrition, the way you eat sometimes can change your appetite. It can change how quick you eat. It can change how if you're full or not. And those little things, make you grow every day because the whole changing one word, changing your life, it gets you to think differently in every aspect of life. You don't think of it, oh, just because during that one class, I thought of this, I'm going to continue. No, you change how you think every single day. So it really helps you in the sense of growing your personality, growing your character, and growing as a person itself because you really change your mindset. So for me, that's how you really connect and grow through classes that we take. And all of these things that Fernando's talking about that he learned about can be useful to anyone regardless of how old you are or what you're going through. We have high schoolers on the team. We have college students. We have adults with careers. Like, no matter what age you are, you learn something different and you adapt to it in a different way. So no matter where you are in life, you'll take each class through a different perspective. Not saying one's better than the other, but each one will adapt to your own lifestyle, whether you're... 70 years old or seven years old there's always something that you can take from a class or from a specific meditation on just how to de-stress or how to be mindful which is what we want to help you guys with all of our podcasts all of our meditations on the mindfulme.org are all there to help all ages and even lessons that you can learn from classes like we did from the ayurveda class or from sound healing these are all benefit these can all benefit you no matter how old you are Um, I think when we're looking at, and I really, I, I loved, loved the idea that Fernando's like, it's a toolbox of a hole in it because you're never going to fill it. Um, and I really, as a teacher, man, I really like that. And I will be, um, I'll be borrowing that from Fernando in years to come. <laughs> no problem. You trademark it. <laughs> I'll trademark it really fast, but no. It, <laughs> I think what, I think something fr from that that really does I don't know I think um, I have been practicing mindfulness obviously I'm the oldest so I've probably been doing it the longest and I've been on a uh, a journey for well over thirty years and it has been in really since mindful me started and I started on this journey with you know this incredible board right, that we have here and all seven of us that are on here, that a lot of what I have really learned started to click and connect. And every class you take, every skill you learn is a puzzle piece. And, you know, we're, we want the puzzle to be finished. And all of a sudden, all these individual puzzle pieces that I've had have really started to kind of coalesce um, in the last couple of months since Mindful Me really got off the ground and, and being able to talk and bounce ideas, not just off with Thomas, 
you know, we, we do our, our podcast of Mind Watch, but just with everybody else, you know, and we're all friends and, you know, we're all with each other and we all have this, this comfortability and this security with each other, knowing that we have each other's back and we can explore different ideas. And, and that's helped me so much. Um, the trust has helped me so much because I really believe that so much of mindfulness helps you to live in the present more fully. Um, we had a weekly message, and it was two weeks ago, that asked the reader to see, think of the amount of time you think about your past or your future, and how much of that time, if you could use it, to focus on where you were right now. And, okay, so I'm old, but my, you know, I remember when the Star Wars, original Star Wars trilogy was in the theater. And I remember Empire Strikes Back, which is my favorite of the nine movies. And I remember when Yoda got really ticked off at Luke and he started saying, you know, your mind is, is always on other things and in the future, but never where you are now. And like, I legit do have the movie memorized <laughs> so much. He so. does. I can, I can vouch for that. Yeah. My family gets pissed off at me when we do watch it because I will like say the entire movie. Um, but until really we started this journey of mindfulme.org, did I really understand what Yoda was saying, which is what so many spiritualists, and, and yes, I do think Yoda is a spiritualist, um, have been saying that we don't focus on, and on where we're at. Things like meditation are meant to quiet the mind. Things like yoga and healthy eating are meant to heal your physical body, heal your soul body, so that you can focus on where you're at. All these spiritual practices, whether it's sound healing or, or, or what, you know, whatnot, even things like acupuncture and, and all these different philosophies that are out there are meant for you to bring yourself to where you're at in the absolute present moment. So I think that's something that as we continue our journey with mindfulme.org, we want to be a positive force for our listeners and our readers. And we want to be that place where you go to, to learn new things constantly. We are not just a one type of meditation. So if I think we've done four or five different types of meditation, you know, we're not just a podcast that talks about one thing. You know, we have three, soon to be four different levels of podcasts that have their own flair and their own topics so that you, the listener, you, the reader, will be able to, to continually add to your toolbox for new things that you learn. We're always going to be students. The seven of us are always going to be wanting the next thing and sharpening our skills and learning new things and reaffirming things we already know so that we can bring that to you out there. And you also have that message that we're always students. So do you mind if I share a quote that kind of like coincides with what you were talking about with being in the present moment? Um, I love quotes. So this, this quote is from the Dalai Lama. And I, I remember I first saw this quote a long time ago and it's always resonated with me since, even before I started doing meditations. Um, so it says, the Dalai Lama, when asked about what surprised him most about humanity, he answered with, man because he sacrifices his health in order to make money then he sacrifices money to recuperate his health and then he is so anxious about the future that he does not enjoy the present the result being that he does not live in the present or the future he lives as if he is never going to die and then dies having never really lived that was really powerful cool. yeah i love that and that really does sum up all of it I just I was just going to say that quote actually gave me chills. Like it's, it's so powerful in, in saying that because that's exactly what happens when we're not being present. Right. Because I'm thinking about the future. I'm thinking about the past. I'm sacrificing this to, to save this. And then it feels so overwhelming and so chaotic that I feel like I'm not paying attention to what's actually happening right now. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. And I think you summed this thing up really well. <laughs> so I know that Jake's got some announcements for us, but you know, thank you guys for, for listening and for being on today because it was, was awesome. awesome. Yeah, definitely. I do indeed have oh, announcements. Uh, first thing What's I'd it? like to announce is the fact that uh, this coming week on Monday, 
Dan will have a new meditation. It's got a working title that I don't know about. It's classified information, but eventually everybody will know, including you, the listeners. Also, next week, we have a podcast by yours truly and Fernando. It will be the Solutions Through Education, uh, a Need to Heed podcast. Um, there's a lot of directions we can go with this one. I'm very excited, including uh, partially something I thought about during this very podcast, which is uh, the presence of mindfulness classes in schooling. When Mr. Katz was talking about how you go through life uh, through multiple uh, subjects, as you would say. And uh, I'm wondering if we could do a little research project, Fernando and I, about the presence or bringing in mindfulness classes to schooling. So Definitely. either that either that, or education about uh, pretty much everything that's going on in the world, maybe a little bit of both, uh, basically how much we need it for those things. Yeah. So yep. not only that, but we will have a weekly inspirational newsletter coming out this Sunday and every Sunday afterwards. You can also find that you can sign up on our mailing list and follow us on all of our social media. It is mindful me with two L's. This includes our new TikTok. We are hip these days, as the youngsters say, as well as going to our website, mindfulme.org. Remember, two L's. Uh, some of the stuff that we talked about today uh, is definitely going to impact our future as an organization and the fact that we want to be able to bring people education through the online medium while people can't be together in person and eventually in person convey the messages that we have as an organization. Uh, you will see this in action coming in August. So as an organization, we are very, very excited. I'm excited to work with this wonderful group and I'm excited for everything that is to come for the group that is mindful me. So thank you everybody in this group chat, sorry, <laughs> this podcast. And uh, that's it for me.